Well, if you're like me and you're heavily invested in Canon and Canon Glass, and you want to dip your toes into or just switch wholesale into the Nikon Z camera system, and it's way too expensive or troublesome to get out of your Canon Glass and into Nikon Glass, well, this bit of tech right here is your answer. So let's talk about it. Well, I hope all is well with everyone. If you've been following the channel, you know that I picked up the Nikon Z9 recently. I only have one Nikon lens for this guy, and that's the Nikon 2-500 to 5.6 F-mount. And I have a lot of Canon EF glass. My favorite lens is, of course, that EF 500 F4 Mark II. And at this time, I don't plan on cutting wholesale over to Nikon glass. Well, at least this time, I don't plan on it. And finally, my plans are to use the Z9 here as my primary camera and until the Canon R1 gets announced. So to make all this work, I need to do one or two things. One was find a way to get into Nikon big large primes, the f2.8 or the f4. Now, that really wouldn't happen without having to sell a lot of lenses. And the second way was to find some way to use my Canon EF glass on this Nikon body. And that's where this little guy came in. It's an EF to Z adapter made by a company called Fringer. And this little guy is what's made it possible to move fully into the Nikon Z9 system and uses full functionality with all my top-level glass. And in this episode, we'll answer a few questions about the Fringer adapter here and can you really use it on all this Canon glass with the Nikon Z9 just as well as its native lenses. So the first question we're going to answer is, does it even work? Does it even use a full AF system with this combo, with this Fringer adapter? Secondly, does it work the same as an F-mount to a Z-mount lens, like, like using the adapter, just like you do with Canon for the EF to RF? Does, it, does the F to Z-mount lenses work just as well as the Fringer mount to the Canon lenses? And lastly, what we'll answer is, is it as good as a Z-mount lens? Does it work as well as a Z-mount lens? So we'll talk about that. There's also a few adapters that'll let you use the Canon EF glass in Nikon Z systems, but uh, doing my research and looking, I found out this, that this Fringer adapter worked the best. So real quickly, if you've never used one of these adapters, it's really simple. It just goes between the lens and the body. So all you do is snap it on. Now, one thing that drives me crazy is everything on a Nikon and Canon are completely backwards. So this goes from left to right or uh, clockwise and Canon goes counterclockwise. So as I put that one, I have to go clockwise and this one I have to go counterclockwise. So that's it, you snap the two in there, you're done. So what does this adapter do? Well, it's supposed to allow you to use the full autofocus functionality of the Nikon Z system with the Canon EF lens. And this may be one of the fastest videos ever done because it's about five degrees up here on this mountain today and my hands are freezing already. So let's get into our first question. Does it even work? Well, yes, it does work. Uh, here's some EVF footage from the Z9 using the Fringer adapter, and I'm using the Canon EF 500mm F4 Mark II. I was lucky when I went out this day, I found one of the red foxes, and you can see the AF finds the fox in the eye very easily. And actually looks where you can see that it's trying to hit both eyes. It'll give you a box on each eye, and it'll give you a little arrow saying, hey, which eye do you want to select? And the resulting image has a good grab of the eye and the focus is nice and crisp if you look at this image here. So that's really, really cool. So that first question, does it even work? Yes. Does it work with the full range of autofocus functions? So far, it looks like it's doing it great. Next, we'll answer the question is how well does it work compared to a native F-mount Nikon lens using the F to Z adapter and we're going to be using the Fringer EF to Z adapter. So in this EVF footage, what we're comparing is, we're comparing the 200 to 500 5.6 F-mount lens compared to my 500 F4 Mark II lens. I understand one's a prime and one's a zoom, but we're not compare, worried about the quality of the image or the sharpness or any of that stuff. What we're comparing is how the autofocus is working. Now we've got the Canon 500 stop down to 5.6 also. Uh, first, I went over to an area where I have a lot of mallards. It makes it real easy because they don't move too far in distance from me. So. I went out there to check the eye track and the focus speed on these guys using these two lenses. So first here is the Nikon lens. And you can see the Nikon lens sees the eye in the head of its available subject. As soon as it sees it, it grabs a little circle, puts a box on it, hit the focus button, it grabs instantly. So what you'll notice on the Nikon, you'll see a little gray box where it's saying, here's where the focus needs to be, the subject tracking, and then when it goes gold, that's when it's actually hitting the bird. 
hitting the eye. And you can see it's working pretty good here. Now let's look at the cannon lens adapted to this Nikon Z. And it works pretty much exactly the same. It's fine in the eye instantly. It's given the little gray box. I'm hitting the focus button, it's grabbing instantly. So really, uh, it, it's grabbing really good. So far, it's looking really, really good. So next, I headed over in an area where I noticed some local foxes. And this took a couple of days because the foxes are just, you know, not just hanging out with you the dry, like they do during the summer or the fall. They're really just bouncing everywhere. And uh, first, we've got the Nikon 2-500 to lens here. And what you can see in this EVF footage is it's seeing both of the eyes again. It's locking on good when hitting the focus. It's just grabbing instantly. So it's really focusing well as we expect it to. Uh, next, we have the Canon F4 here, the 500. And you can see it again. It snaps right to the eye. It sees both the eyes. I really can't see a difference in these two on how the focus work and how fast the autofocus spins the motors, these lenses, real quickly. And after examining the images of both, the focus hits well. Uh, we'll go back in the studio after a while and we'll do a review of the burst and see if we see any focus jumping amongst that. Because sometimes, even though it says you got the focus, it may jump around. But for what I'm initially seeing, I'm not seeing that. So I had to move from my last location because uh, the wind started picking up. You probably hear the audio was getting pretty crappy there. Uh, but all of a sudden, a big wind gust came through there and about blew me over. So I moved farther down the mountain so I could finish this up. So our last question is talking about the Z mount lens on versus the EF to Z mount lens. Uh, so went back over to the duck area using these two lenses again because these ducks don't move a lot. And actually, I found them in the parking lot, which is awesome. They're just sitting in the, in the, on the ground there for me. So here is the footage from the Z-mount lens. And what you'll notice again is real quickly, it finds a little gray box, hits the, the eye of the duck, and then it'll hit the body. And as I go to move around different ducks, it just grabs and grabs and grabs. I hit the focus button, instantly grabbing right to the eye or the head, whatever the little box is sitting on. So it looks really good. And look at the images. It was sharp where it hit the eye and it hit the eye well. So next we'll move over to the EF lens adapted to the Z-body. So this one again, it was I like bringing over the ducks. Sure enough, it's snapping the little gray box is seeing, hey, here's the head, here's the eye, hit the button for the focus, zips right to it. Really amazing that it's working really well. Uh, looking at the images, they're sharp. They're tack sharp, just like the Z lens is. While I was using the EF mounted lens, I did notice something that happened to me twice. Uh, when the bird was a little farther away, it would do all the pixelization my pixelization excuse me it was doing the area focus like a little, little red boxes everywhere and that's on the same focal plane so i'm getting the duck focus so the duck is tack sharp but i noticed a little bit later when i started using the z lens again i noticed when the duck got about the same distance i had the same thing how every once in a while it would just do the like all the little area instead of the auto subject tech box so it wasn't just the EF lens was giving me a problem. It was actually the autofocus system. That's just what it does when it hits that certain area and doesn't really see the eye or the head, doesn't really recognize it as a duck when it gets a little busier. So it seemed to work the same there. So what we're going to do now, we're going to run back to the house and we're going to go through the images, look at the bursts of these things. We're going to look at the, the 500 series with the Fox and the Ducks with the 500 prime lenses, the EF the, and the F lenses, and we're going to compare the Z and the EF lenses and see how they stack up, or they would get any pulsing things like that. Because usually when you have a non-native lens, uh, you will get, the, even though it says you're in focus, everything records as focus, is the image in focus. So we're gonna go look at that real quick, and we'll do a final wrap up of my thoughts on this Fringer adapter. And is it really good for wildlife photography? Can you really use your candle lenses with a Nikon Z body? We'll answer that question when we get back to the house and look through the images. Talk to you here in just a bit. All right, guys, we are back here at the house, and we're going to look at these images here in a second on the computer with how this Fringer adapter is adapting these uh, Canon lenses to the Nikon Z9 body versus the native F mount and Z mount lenses on this Nikon Z9 body. But first, if you guys want to help support the channel, you can do all the basic things like you normally would do is like, subscribe, share, watch the video all the way through, which that really helps any uh, YouTube channel out by watching the whole video for the algorithm. But you can also uh, join the channel membership on the, this channel also for the Wild Alaska. And that gives you a little bear icon and gives you some emotes and things like that. And it's as low as a dollar, but it really helps the channel out so I can do more things like rent more of these lenses and bodies and things like that to give you guys more comparisons and more, more YouTube content. But anyway, let's get into these images. 
we're looking at those ducts first. So we're talking about the 500 F4 versus the 2 to 500 F mount Nikon at 500 millimeters. So the first lens we're going to look at here is actually the 2 to 500. So the first few images, let me zoom back out, are the 2 to 500. So these first four are that. So we're in focus, in focus, in focus. All four are in focus. We'll zoom in and look at the head a little better. Focus, focus, focus. So everything's pretty much in focus there. So that's good. Let's look at the next batch here. The same lens. We've got more in this burst. So we've got uh, 67, got 12 in this burst. So here's the first frame here. The eye looks good. Eye looks good. Good. We'll zoom into these here in just a second. So let me get back to the beginning of this. We'll zoom in the first frame. So here's the eye in focus. Feathers look good. All look great. So not seeing any pulsing or any focus. When it's saying it's locked on, it's locked on. This is not a real complex subject, uh, but that's what it is. So let's keep looking. All right, we're jumping into the 500 millimeter F4 Canon lens. Remember the last ones I just showed you, those are the two to 500 Nikon. So these are the Canons. So let's look at the first image in this group. And we got four shots in this one. And they all look good to me. We'll zoom in here. Whoops, went too far. I'm gonna start with the first image. This one doesn't look as tack sharp on that eye. The next two look pretty good. Well, once the computer catches up. Okay, it wasn't, no, they look fine. The computer just wasn't caught up yet. And this one's a little more in the shadow, but we have the glint and the sharpness here. So those look good. Let's jump over to the next batch of these little guys. So what I've done is I've tried to find pictures that were in a series is that that shutter's going off. Not any of these little ones and twos, just the ones that had multiple. So this one, has about 22 images, so it's a one second burst, about like that eagle was. So let's look at this, so let's zoom out first. So the first one looks good, second one looks good, good, good. I'm not seeing any focus misses or any pulses yet. So that was a whole series that looked good. So let's zoom in and look at this head a little bit better. Looks great, water droplets, everything's in focus. Um, jumping forward, looks good, still looks good. That computer's kind of trying to catch up for some reason. It's like, eek, eek. Right, looks good. It's good. It's good. It's good. Everybody looks good to me. So those are the comparisons. So I don't see either one of the 2 to 500 or the 500 F4 on this lens missing on the focus. Um, you remember those boxes, sometimes I grab the whole head or grab the body or grab just the eye, but these here, the pictures, when I took the pictures out of those 20 some bursts, those one second bursts, I'm not seeing any fluctuations or any pulsing on that eye, which is really, really good or on the focus point. So that's really good. All right, so the next one, remember, was the foxes. So let's look at these fox images we had here with the same setup. All right, these, the first ones we're looking at here are the two to 500, again, the Nikon lens, right? So let's look at these images. Here's our little girl, our cute little fox. And we're going to go through these again where we're not zoomed in. I don't see any misses yet. That's cute. Look back here. sticking her tongue out at us. Uh, looking good. Good, 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 good. Okay, we're repeating ourselves. So let's... Are we repeating ourselves? Where are we at? Okay. All right. So let's zoom in and look at them. All right. We're, looks good to me. I'm really looking at this one. We're at f5.6, 1 800th. Looks fine to me. Next shot looks good. Looks good. There's the tongue. It's hard to tell with her eyes when I'm shooting 1 800th. I like to shoot her 1 1000th. It, it, everything looks good. Uh, her head's in shadow, so it's really hard to tell. There was no light this day, so it's really not the greatest conditions. There's that tongue. That's funny. <laughs> she cracks me up. Uh, all right, she's looking good. Still looking good. Still looking good. So that's quite a bit of movement there with her head, so that's pretty good. I don't really see any pulses. I think it's a little soft in the eyes, but I think that's more the... Uh, 
the aperture and the light than anything. All right, let's jump over to our next set of images here. Let me zoom back out. This is a really uh, not an easy shot because she's back in the brush, okay? If you remember from that video, from the footage. So here, start the first shot. Looks good. Looks good. So you can see right in here, even right here by her face, and here, these little blurs you see, those are sticks that I'm focusing through. So I grabbed her eye through those, and they all look good. So let's zoom in on the face. Let's look at the face. So you can even see I've got a stick across the eyes even, because you can see it right there. Wow. Uh, it's a pretty nice focus. So we're looking here. Everything looks good. I don't see any wobbles. I think the focus point's held in the same spot. Yeah. Looks good. Even with the stick across the face, that's pretty nice. So that's the two to five there. That's the Nikon one. So it looks good. I don't see any pulsing whatsoever in that, in the images. So the autofocus on the Nikons, the F to Z should work. It's the Nike native Nikon. So now let's jump over and we're going to look at the Canon 500 F4. So here's the first batch of four here. She's pretty much in the open. She's pretty isolated. The focus should catch it. So now let's look at, did it hold? Did it fluctuate? So what I'd expect on a non-native lens is I should expect some pulsing. We didn't see it on the ducks. Now let's see if we see it on the fox. So focus, focus. No, it's dead on. That eye's in focus. She's in focus. Looks good. So that passed. So let's jump ahead. Let's go find another big long burst here. So these are the tricky ones again. This is kind of almost, a, she went in almost the same area for me. So she's back here in these trees and the brush. So this is again tricky. Again, got all this brush, got to focus through the brush. I think in a minute we're going to have brush in front of her face. So let's look at these real fast. What was that noise? Um, so that's hitting her eye there. That's interesting because it's right behind that stick. Um, again, behind the stick, looks like the eyes in focus. When we zoom in here in a second, 100%, we will look better at it. All so far, I do not seeing any out of focus shots here. Let's go, okay, back to the beginning. Make sure I'm at 100%. So let's jump in here, 100%. This is a little underexposed, but I underexpose a lot. I like to color the eye back in. Uh, the eye looks, the face looks in focus. The eyes look okay. All right, so we shouldn't have motion blur in the eyes. And this doesn't just look like shadows. So let's jump forward. Our, our, uh, oops, lost her head. Yeah, it's in focus. Looks nice. Still in focus. Now, she moved her head. She's pretty close to the same focal plane, but it's behind all this. She moved behind her. I mean, I've got grass close to me all the way out to her. And it looks like it's still focusing. So, there we go. So this is a tricky one. Look at that. There's a stick right in front of the eye, and it's focusing right there, and that's sharp, tack sharp, still tack sharp, still tack sharp right on the eye. Actually got both eyes. Look at that. It's behind that, and it's grabbing it. So still, it's not pulsing. That's good. Turn her head to the side. That's really good in focus, getting the catch lights. I like that in her eye. The other way, she's not catching those lights. There she is, still in focus on the eye. We're behind a bunch of grass. See how it kind of got softer because behind she turned her head behind her grass. I don't think it's not behind grass, that little spot right there. Again, that eyes. It's, there's still some grass here between me and her, but it's focusing through it. And that's it. That's a whole set there. That's pretty impressive, and I don't see any fluctuation in there. That's not good when I do that. So, all right, let's move forward. Let's look for another set here. Do I have another one I've captured yet? I've got another one set here. Okay. This is a pretty tricky one too. She is closer to me in this set, but she's got her, she's closer to me, but she's moving her head a lot. So this one I would expect to see, even me not getting the focus on the camera. So let's see what we got here. So it looks good, looks good. I'm just gonna keep going unless I see one bad. That looks good. We'll zoom in because that looked like it may have been a little, I don't know, I guess that not, looks good. Still looking. That one's no, it's fine. Thought it was questionable for a second. Just the way the head moved, just let light look different. Still on. All right, we're back to the beginning. All right, let's zoom in and see what we got now. All right, tack shirt. Let's move out to 66% because 100 is too much. 
All right, sharp, sharp, sharp. Still in, we're still in focus. And just again, that's the angle of the head because this is all in focus. Yeah, that's in focus. Light, the way the light catches. We're still in focus. That one may... Because that nose, again, it's focal plane. you got to remember, I'm shooting F4, so this all looks good here. That nose just looked a little different. See, so, that's because it's, this nose is close to that focal plane. It's towards me now. It's away. It's really amazing with the, you know, these shallower depth of field lenses, the F4s and F2.8s, how quick things can fall out just by that little bit of nose movement, just probably an inch or so, and that's all it took for it to the nose to drop out, but the eye and the, this part of the head still be nice and clear. All right, let's keep moving. Uh, this one is off. See, this ear hair is good here, but this head isn't. So there's one that's off. This probably, if we looked at the EVF footage, we'd probably see that this is when the focus box came off or I let off the focus box for a second. Because if you notice in that EVF footage, a couple times I reacquired the eye or it bounced up. And also one time it looked like the EVF bounced up in here. Uh, using the 3D tracking, because the 3D tracking, when you hit it, it tries to go something close to that box. Uh, but anyway, th those all, the rest of them look good. We had one, one that was out, out of all those, and it was that one right there. Yeah, that's, that's, this is, the, yeah, I let off because that, that fox can't move that fast and, you know. So yeah, alright, so we had one, looks bad, out of that. So we'll just, we'll say that could be pulsing, that could just be me letting off the focus. So let's look at the next batch here. All right, so zoom back out first. All right, oh, she's standing on her log here. Her favorite little log, she loves this log. All right, so far, I don't see any misfocus. Nope, no misfocus. Let's look, zoom in. Looks good. I'm a little overexposed, this little fur is blowing out a little bit, but I like, I still like the picture. All looking focused to me. Yep, all look good to me. Look at this little batch here. Her running out of the frame. See what it looks like. Looks pretty good. Let's zoom in and look at it. Let's see what it looks like. In focus. In focus. In focus. In focus. Almost in focus, so that's pretty good. It's a good little burst there. Uh, moving pretty fast. Just wanted to see one where she's trotting. Okay, that was the image comparison on the Nikon F mount lens versus the Canon EF lens using the Fringer adapter. Both of them to me looked like they held their focus. I didn't really see any pulsing. We saw one picture off on the Fox, everything else looked pretty good. So I didn't really see any pulsing in there from what I can see on those image comparisons. So now let's jump over to the Z mount versus the EF mount with the Fringer adapter. So the first one is the EF Canon mount we're going to look at. So let's look here. Let's we'll go ahead and zoom in instead of just stay way back. So we look good here. In focus on that little eye. Gotta remember these ducks aren't, you know, that eye's kind of small in the frame. We're zoomed in here quite a bit. So far, I'm seeing, I have not seen any pulsing. And I'm jumping around from duck to duck here. All looks good to me. So let's look at the next batch. And these are now, that was the EF 7200 Canon lens, all right? So now here's the 7200 Z lens. So here, get these here. Yeah, these are all the ZVR lens here. And let's do the same thing. We already zoomed in, so let's look here in focus. We're looking good. I would expect this lens to be great. It looks good. Beautiful lens. Everything looks good. We're a little closer to the ducks we were in the other picture. I guess I stepped forward just a little bit more. These ducks are just sitting in the parking lot. Some are walking, some are sitting. All look good. You saw that head turn. They all look good. That was the image comparison of the Nikon Z native lens versus the EF Canon lens with the Fringer adapter. And what was my conclusion on that one? 
Well, they both look the same. Remember, what we're looking at here is focus, and do we have any pulsing in those images? And I didn't see it on either image. So the Fringer passed the test there. And so what's my conclusion on how this focus works with both lenses for the F mount and the Z mount? So the first question we had was, does it work? Yes, we know it works, works great. Second question we had, is it comparable to an F mount lens using the F to Z adapter versus a Canon with the Fringer adapter for the EF to Z? And yes, it works exactly the same. We only had one image in the Fox that was off and that was not in the same burst. I had it in the same set, but it was a burst and a second burst. The first image of the second burst was the one that was off. Many things could have caught that. So the first image always could be a little bit off because maybe you get a little trigger happy. Um, the next thing was, how does it compare to a Z-mount lens versus the Canon EF? To me, they look the same. We'll give a caveat here in a second. So when the, going to the duck's head on either the Z or the EF, the box seemed to pop in exactly the same amount of time. When I hit the focus button, they both jumped right to it, right on the eye at the same time. I could not discernibly tell a difference in how quick it was grabbing to the eye on either one of the lens on the Z or the EF using the Fringer adapter. Now, I would assume that that Z has to be faster because a native lens has to be faster than any adapted lens. So I'm sure it's faster, but I could not tell the difference when I'm shooting and that difference in the focus. Um, and the same for the F mount lens. So you got to remember another thing too. And this is a big one. I know a lot of people kept talking to me and said, uh, for this four or five people in the mentions said the two to 500 was a slow lens, a slower lens and other ones. I didn't see that. That two to 500 spun just as fast as the Z lens and just as fast as the F mount, EF mounted lens. It spun really fast and that's due to these bigger bodies. So these big batteries that these cameras have, the, the 1DX, the Proline Nikon, the Z9, the R3, have a bigger battery. I noticed that when I was testing out the uh, R3 with the lenses, my 500 lens versus the R5. And that R3 spun the motors faster. And the same thing happens with the Z. It spins all these motors a lot faster than the other camera's gonna spin due to just the, the power that this thing's putting out to those motors. So that may be why I'm not noticing the slowness that some people, other people are noticing it. If you're a Z9 shooter, you shoot the Toyota 500, tell me where I'm missing that, that it, that it is slower than the others, but I'm not seeing it myself, and that's just me. I'm new to that 2 to 500, but it's a good, good lens at 5.6 in the focal range. That's great. So yes, the final answer is yes, you can shoot your Canon lenses on a Nikon Z body. I wouldn't go out and buy Nikon lenses for the Z, but if you're like me, you already have them, this is a great solution. This little Fringer adapter, it seems to be the best one, is the most expensive one also. This thing retails about $300, $299 on their site. I'll probably have a link on this in my affiliate links on how to get this lens. All right, the thing that everybody's probably been waiting on is who won the 3,000 subscriber print giveaway, the Eagle print. And the winner is Jeff Olson. That's at Jeff Olson 4731. Uh, Jeff, what you need to do is uh, message me on Instagram or message me on Facebook and send me, we'll get your address. I'll get that print sent out to you. Hopefully get it to you before Christmas. Um, so congratulations, Jeff, on winning that. Um, just a quick uh, update on what's going to be coming out. I've got a ptarmigan video coming out. I've got a doll sheep video coming out. I've got a fox video that's going to be coming out really quick. And I have otters, river otters. Amazing, lucky capture for me. I will also have an R6 Mark II review coming out. And this is all hopefully in the month of December. And also probably if I can get it done, I think I can because i got a little bit of time off the, around the holidays. I'm going to do the R6. Five, six, seven, ten. how to use the autofocus set up in the field. I've already done the video on how to set your camera up. Now I'll show you how to use it in the field. So anyway, guys, uh, thanks for watching this long, sitting through all this as always, and I will see you guys on the next video.